I was reading today about making sodas like ginger ale or root beer uh, using yeast as the carbonation agent. And since the, uh, the specialty beer supply store is within walking distance of my place, I went over there to see if they carried the recommended type of champagne yeast that is used for making these types of fermented sodas. And they did. I bought some. I'm going to give it a shot. What I'm going to be trying today is a ginger, kind of a ginger ale. And I'm going to try it with some modifications. The stock ginger ale calls for about 13% um, sugar by weight. Uh, for 750 milliliters, that comes out to be about uh, 100 or so grams of sugar. I'm instead going to try using this Baking Splenda. This Baking Splenda is, by mass, about twice as sweet as regular sugar. So I only need about 50 milliliters for it. Now, there is a side effect, of course, because less sugar means that there's less for the yeast to feast on. Reading up on the internet, apparently the, the yeast don't need that much sugar because we're not making an alcoholic beverage here. Well, we're only going to be fermenting to under 1% alcohol. The goal is really for the carbon dioxide. And so apparently even just a few teaspoons would be plenty for this purpose. But I'm going to go for 50 grams of this 50 percent sugar mixture by sweetness. Of course not by mass because Splenda is like hundreds of times sweeter than sugar. And then I've got 50 grams in here. I'm going to put in my ginger. I've got a whole honking load of ginger in here. A total of about uh, 70 or so grams. And I've got some lemon, and most of the recipes do call for some amount of, of acidity. And so here I've got some, I've got a lemon here, or half a lemon really, to squeeze into this, this mixture here. Um, and then this is of course all going to get strained before we go into, uh, into the bottle. We're not, we're not going to try to pour this, this, this chunky mixture into the bottle. So that's it for the, the lemon. I'm going to be making a, a kind of a simple syrup out of this. So we're going to put in hot water and then take this to the stove. We're going to whip this around and now we are I'm going to take a look at the stove here. Put the lid on. Let this thing heat up. And I'm going to, to boil it for a bit. And get everything nice and, and dissolved. Uh, total amount of ginger in this. I think I have about 75 grams or so of ginger which I think for 750 ml is a little high compared to the stock recipe. Um, but I, I like stuff gingery. And what I'm also going to do is I actually have a soda siphon. So what I'm going to do is try to preserve some of this sweetened concentrate. I'm not going to use all of it in the bottling. I'm going to preserve some of it on the side. And for a given amount of sweetness, I'm going to try to compare the taste between... Um, mixing this water with water and then fermenting it compared to um, mixing it with a soda and see what that and see what that tastes like
probably could have used a little less water but well what's done is done let's let's let this guy go meanwhile I will clean up my space a little bit when I went over to the to the beer and wine making store they have a lot of different kinds of yeast in the fridge there all kinds of different uh, for white wine, red wine, different kinds of beers, a whole fridge full of different yeasts. Um, and so when I went into the store, I asked the, uh, the, the shopkeeper, I'm looking for a, a white wine or champagne yeast. He asked me, you know, what are you making? And I said, you know, I'm making soda. And he pointed me to the yeast. He says, okay, for that purpose, this is the best yeast for it. This is the Red Star Pasteur Champagne apparently imported from Belgium and so there's five grams in here and for this recipe I am only going to need um, one one gram so I'm gonna have to dose out one gram of this yeast In order to, uh, in order to not over overload the the yeastiness of this thing. So now we've got this boiling. I'm gonna go stage, and then we'll come back for the the straining and bottling. So back again. I've got my my hot sugar syrup solution. And I'm gonna strain it through, in order to build the uh, the basic syrup concentrate. Now. I've got the yeast measured out here. I've got a gram. I had to actually whip out uh, my smaller, more sensitive um, scale in order to get a single gram. Like most dry yeast, this yeast needs to be proofed um, before it goes in. So I can't just you know randomly dump the the the, the dry yeast into hot or cold liquid. Uh, I'm going to save a bit of this. I'm going to put some aside. To use as a as a concentrate experiment for uh, for later. I don't need a huge amount actually, so I'll save about 25 milliliters of this. Set this set this aside in this beaker for the experiment later. Um, and now I'm going to want to proof this. And I'm going to want to proof it at according to the package uh, from 38 to 41 degrees centigrade. Uh, that means I want to proof it at about 40 degrees centigrade. And this almost certainly is too hot. I'm not going to just want to want to pour it in. So I'm going to need some water in order to adjust the temperature. So I'll pour some in just like that. I'll take a temperature probe reading and. Uh, Whoops, we're in Fahrenheit here. So I want to be between 100 and 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is still too hot. Here, 120. One ten. One oh seven. One oh six. One oh five. Um okay, one oh five point six. I'll give it a little bit more cold water. All right, comfortably between 100 and, all right, there we go. Like I said, comfortably between 100 and 105. Now I'm gonna put the, take out this probe, put the yeast in, take the whisk, stir it around a bit. 
and then let this get nice and ready. And that is pretty sweet. Perhaps not ginger enough, but we will see. It was quite quite a lot of ginger. Squeeze a little more gingeriness out. Alright. See if there's anything on un any unusual proofing instructions. No, not really. So this should be good and sweet for the for the base. Get the jug of water over here. Now I'm going to fill the bottle here. But I'm gonna have to tilt the angle up a little bit. So we can check out the bottle. I'm gonna grab my good old funnel. And I'm going to pour the concentrated mixture in. And Apparently that's about all the bottle will hold. So we'll see. Maybe this will end up being too sweet. Who knows? That's quite a bit more volume than I expected because, well, that's fine. Okay. Then I'm going to cap this guy up. Now they say I'm going to shake this around a bit to make sure that it's fully mixed. Okay, and now I'm going to stick this into my trusty network closet, which is nice and warm, and we will see how this looks after 24 hours. See you tomorrow. The thing I want to show before I put this away. Uh, there's a thing I did off screen that I forgot to show, which is I let me do it again. Actually, I saw this on a YouTube video. It's a nice trick. the The gas of this is going to expand, right? So it's in theory it's going to carbonate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze the flexible part of the bottle to push up the water some. That will give the the plastic a little extra space when the gas starts to build up. Um, and it'll also give me a better idea of when the carbonation is ready. One of the advantages of using a plastic bottle rather than the glass bottle is that I can, based on the firmness of this plastic you see here, kind of, it's kind of squishy, I can tell how much carbonation this is. So I want this to eventually push out so that the, um, so that the bottle, instead of being slightly uh, deflate like it is now, is firmly pushed out it has a relatively firm body. When that's the case, that should indicate that there's plenty of gas inside uh, enough to make it like a soda.